Hello my peeps, it's Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. Today we are making explosion cards. And I apologize that this is not a live video and that we don't get to interact and have fun. I couldn't make it work. <laughs> That's the long and the short of it. I couldn't make it work. Um, I have a very busy week. I'm very excited about our spring extravaganza that's on Saturday and lots of work to do to get ready for that. And so I started doing that this morning and then I thought, oh, I forgot about my, I have got to go back and fix this. And I have played and played and tried a bunch of different things and it's just not working. And right now I have to prioritize my time. So next week after the extravaganza is over and I have a bit more time, I am determined I'm going to figure out what flip got switched. That's not my right. What switch got flipped because it used to work. I don't know like all of a sudden why it doesn't. So for now we're just doing recordings and we'll put them up and I'm happy to message and chat with you in other ways, but live video it is not. So here's our card. Um, in this case, we have a belly band. I'm going to show you on the card we make together. I'm going to show you a different way to close these cards, but so this just slides off and it's kind of cool on its own. Um, I can't remember what I can't remember what the belly band is for, but because they have this like little hole in them, right? I hooked it over something on my desk and I had it as just like an, an ornament for the longest time. Um, why you ask, Tracy, why are these explosion guards? That's why. <laughs> because the inside can bow it out, I guess. Now, I was having a lot of fun, I will confess, making this card. And I loved this paper and I was like, oh, I'm going to make this paper so pretty. And you get to see so much paper. I'm going to make it so pretty. I even put paper on the background in here. Okay, there's, <laughs> there's two flaws with that. It's a very busy card, for one. Uh, and two, I didn't leave very many places to write. Now, you could write right here and right here, I guess, if you wanted to. Or if you if you kind of manhandled a little bit, and make, you know, you could find ways to make that work. But... Maybe I should have put a little more thought into that, but I just, I love these papers and this, especially this, this Misty Moonlight one, which is going to go away. But I digress. The whole point of this though is the card kind of boom and it, the inside sort of explode out at you. Wah! They're very cool. And then when you pop it, just back, pop it back in. So I had a couple things I, I thought of as I was, as I was making this card other than the, and I put these little, the little blue gems from the holiday rhinestones on them, which are these most awesome, different, like dark colors of, of rhinestone. And I, I just, I love the look of this card. Um, but yes, there's, I got a lot going on. So the next one we make, I picked a busy paper as well. <laughs> I like busy and bold. That's me, busy and bold. Um, but this one, I'm not going to put as much paper on to give you an idea uh, that it, it doesn't always have to be in your face but I'm going to show you how I made this card and then as I always do I make something and then I go hmm I wonder and then there's the result of the hmm I wonder part so I'll tell you what that part is too so right now I'm cracking up at the fact that my son is making all the noise in the background which I can hear super loudly and I'm curious how much of it you can hear <laughs> but it is what it is um I, I spent so much time trying to get it fixed that I thought okay if I don't start now um, I'm not going to get it done. And then I knew that if I didn't wait till he came in the door and said, I'm recording, he would come in the door and it would be loud. So it's all on me. I should have, I should have, I should have realized the first thing this morning to do this. And when it didn't work, I should have just done this much earlier, but such is life. So these are all my little bits and pieces for decoration, but you'll notice this is on the outside that I don't have a ton. Oh, and I have my, my all time favorite linen thread to go on it. I was actually going to stamp on these, show you what it was like. Um, and I realize now that I forgot one little piece. This might be a little bit smaller than I wanted, but I'm going to gonna use it anyways. And I'm going to put a piece on the inside to write on. <laughs> okay, so let's start with, let's start with the basics. This is your typical, I say typical, then all of a sudden I forget what it is. Five and a half by eight and a half piece of paper. So this is basically one piece of cardstock cut in half on the long side. Um, and this would be normally how this one scored differently. So I'm not going to, I can't show you. I'll grab another one here. This is one that would be like your typical landscape orientation card, which now that I say that I can't. So same thing, this is half a sheet of paper, right? 
and normally we would just score it in the center and then you would have your landscape so we've done that only we didn't just score it in the center no we scored it two and an eighth so two and one eighth inches in on either side i'm not going to show you how to score that because that's pretty basic but i will show you what i did to uh, to line the card up so i'm going to take the first score line and i'm just going to score it shut and i'm using this because i want it nice and, and set now there, you, you do have a little bit of wiggle room in your score line to adjust so I made the first one and I don't want these to overlap and I also don't want a big gap and I will show you I'll put this here so it's easier to see I do not want a big gap in the middle like I don't want to be able to see the inside but I also look like said I don't want them to overlap so what I found is you have the score line which is going to guide you but don't put too much pressure on it yet instead line up the, the edges the way you want so I've got these lined up here I've got them lined up so they're they're straight on the edges this way and then I've just got them butted up against each other here. Now I'm going to use as many fingers as I can fit there and anchor it. And I'm going to pull away, not towards, because towards will just push it overlapping. I'm going to pull away from there so I can push this seam down. And then I'm going to give it a nice good burnish. So now I have no gap. Everything lines up just perfectly, which it doesn't always work that well. In this case, it did. And I can't see the cardstock, right? But I also have no overlap, which is what I was going for. And then I made these two pieces to put on the front. So these are two inch strips. So this is a two and an eighth inch fold and a two inch strip. So it's very easy to remember. Now, instead of doing a belly band on this one, I decided that I'd rather just tie it shut. So that's actually what we're gonna try. But I think, because as you'll notice, we're gonna try, I haven't actually done it before. Uh, well, I mean, I've, I've done similar, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. But I think because of the nature of getting the inside of the card done, I don't want anything on the outside yet. So my recommendation is going to be to wait to decorate the outside until after we've got the inside done. We'll see if I'm right or not when we're done at the end. But here we go. Okay, so this piece here was, I was just going to stick it in the middle and put it down so that there's something to write on. I don't know, I honestly... <laughs> Um, and you'll see when we do this, so I'm not going to um, adhere it yet. I also, I don't actually know if that would be the better idea. Putting it down here would be the better idea. I put the, the explosion panel in the middle. But as I'm thinking that now, I'm thinking, what if I put it higher up and left room down below? I think the centered is what looks better. So I think you have lots of options for what to do. For now, we're just going to put this off to the side. So our card base is ready for its, it's, ready for its guts. So I'm going to pull up my trusty, and why? Because I have so much stuff on my desk. Why not add more? <laughs> I'm going to pull up my trusty trimmer, which also happens to be a scorer. And I'm going to score this piece of paper. And I'm going to try to make it so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so this piece of paper is four inches by eight inches. And if, if it's, if it matters what direction, so in this case, I don't know if you noticed that when I did this, but these are trees. So trees grow, you know, green side up. So you want the, you want to be looking at it on the eight inch side, right? So if, it, if direction matters, make your long measurement, your eight inch side, the one that has everything right side up. And then it's just four wide, four deep. Now this is super easy scoring. At least the first part is because <laughs> we're going to score at two, four and six, right? So we're just going to make three panels on this. That are two inches apart and, and I'm, I'm making sure I get a good score on it especially because this paper is really dark and sometimes it's hard to see score lines on dark paper but I'm not pushing that hard I'm just kind of going back and forth over it because you don't want to rip your paper now comes the slightly trickier part of the scoring and I think I'm for the purpose of this I'm gonna actually flip my card over so you guys are able to see so I have the score line in the middle and the score line in the middle is really just and I guess you could do it with um, just make markings in it, but it's really just to, as far as I can tell, it's just to give you a place to go. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of pushing in on my score line so I can get two center line marks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that center line. And I did find, and you don't notice this once you, once you adhere, you don't even notice that you did this, the, like the foldy part. I did notice that if I, if I put my little bend 
up so I could see what I was doing. And then I want to put this point. Okay. <laughs> I have, to, I have to scooch a bit so that I can make this work. Um, so I put the bend in the, in the track, or like lined it up with the track, and then I'm lining the point up with the track. And I'm holding on to it so that when I put this down, I don't knock everything loose. And I'm going to score end to end. And I'm going to do the same thing, only upside down. So I'm putting the, the bend, the corner of the bend there. I'm putting that pointy tip over there. Line it up three times before I keep moving it on myself. And I'm going to score by the side. And I'm going to do that again. Because it was so much fun the first time, I'm going to do it again. So again, my little bent center line bend there in the middle. Oops. Seriously, do this like 12 times each one because I keep sliding it when I go to close the cover. The trick is my thumb never moves. <laughs> I find it easier to hold it up like this. So I need to keep like these fingers need to do it. But once I plant my thumb and my thumb is half on the paper, half on the scoreboard, because it's a little bit slippery. <clears throat> if I can remember to do that, I have the best shot at, at uh, not moving it when I don't want to. And in this case, it's not my thumb. I'm just using my finger, but um, same thing. It's just lining it up. And then I have to, I have to like, I have to let go of everything that time. I have to let go of the, like the pressure on the bend so that I can get the cover down to score. But I don't want to let the whole card move. So there we go. We are scored. So what that looks like, and I did not, uh, I did not draw a picture, but because this paper is so dark, I am going to show you. Not well, I can guarantee because straight lines, not my friend. So this is our eight by four. Oops. Uh, we're gonna score at two, four, and six. Again, I, I, I forewarned you the lines weren't gonna be straight. So these were our score lines, right? So basically what we did is we scored an X like this. And we scored a second X like this. Now what, that, that didn't even go to the corner. So what we're gonna do was, is, and I had it at the beginning, I alluded to it, this little part here where our sentiment goes is actually going to go in here. This is the square that it's going to go in and all the rest is going to fold around it. So this is what we did. We scored these lines and these lines are important to make the me mechanism work. Um, this little line, like I said, is to line everything up, but you cover it. And these ones are the mechanism, but that's what we've done. Three score lines and then two X's. All righty. Now, <laughs> when I did this, the first card I made, I did this a couple times and I don't know. And I kept, I kept going around and around and thinking, okay, why can't my brain settle on this? Which is going to be inside the card, which is going to be outside of the card. So finally, what I figured out was this is what I want to see when I open my card. When I open my card, let me get that out of the way for now. I open it like this. Do I want to see trees or do I want to see wood grain? Quite honestly, either works, but in this case, I want to see trees. So this is what I want to see. So I'm going to fold everything over to, to hide the trees, right? So if you keep it, if you keep that in mind, when you go to fold your score lines, you're hiding the trees because that's what's going to be on the inside. Holy cow! I never noticed how much this paper and my desk matched. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that. So we're going to fold these two over. The, so the X. Okay, we're going to fold over to hide the inside because that's the part we want to see. Now, <clears throat> in the rule of just card mechanics, let's call it, um, you generally have to alternate things, right? If you made everything a hill or everything a valley, it wouldn't work. So generally you'll have like hill, valley, hill, valley, or valley, hill, valley, hill. So these are considered valleys, right? This fold is considered a valley, so is this one, because it makes a valley, which means the fold in the middle, that straight up and down line, needs to be a hill. So just remember that. You can't all be hills, you can't all be valleys. You need to mix them both. So because I have these ones, now look at this. Boom, mechanism, done. <laughs> it took me probably 15 minutes and I folded and unfolded and back and which one the first time to do this and it was just crazy to me. And then when I, when I sat down and really, I looked at the finished one and I'm like, what am I hiding? This is what, this is what I'm hiding. This is what the big reveal is gonna be. 
fold it over to hide. Everything got easier then. So we're going to do that same thing again. Now, now remember, this is directional, so I have to make sure when I put this in the card, I put it the right way, but for folding, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to find my score lines. There we go. I'm going to hide my trees. I'm going to hide my trees. Because, you know, it's so easy to hide the forest. Right? So I've got my two valleys. If I got a valley, that means I need a hill. So the one in the middle is going to be the hill. So you can see, just to make that make more sense. Valley. Hill. Valley. And once I have that done, boom. It just naturally goes where it's supposed to. And then once it's all done, I just kind of line it up and here we go. So now I'm going to put it, I'm going to look at it the right way. Okay, so now I'm going to put it so that my trees are going the right direction. So here's my little mechanism in the middle, <clears throat> which in hindsight I really should have picked. I, did, I, was, I was really just concerned with the trees. I didn't even look at the back of the paper. But yes, it really blends. Okay, so this is the mechanism in the middle that's going to go like this. Now, when I made the first card, I popped it in right away. I was all excited. And you can, but when you do it, the card does not open and lay flat when it's finished. So when you do, you're working a little harder to get things lined up because you got your hands over top of each other because it doesn't lay completely flat. So what I realized afterwards was it'd be a whole lot easier <laughs> just to stamp this thing and put it in. Get my ink out. Um, <clears throat> before I put the, the, the guts in the middle. So that's what we're going to do. And I should have started earlier because I really, I was really intending to put this, like have this posted on time, but we're not going to. So I am now conscious of the fact that I want this whole entire thing to be done in eight minutes. And here's the thing, this card has a lot of impact, but you'll see in the end, it's not really that complicated. Um, so maybe it is possible that we'll have this done in the end. Uh, <laughs> part of me wants to do something else with this. Uh, part of me is going to do something else with this. Okay. So if it's a little late posting, that will be fine. Um, okay. I'm going to show you the front first because, I, because I'm going to show you the big reveal on this stamp. This is one of the new stamps that came out in the mini catalog. And when it first came out, I was like, meh. Love the tree though. And this, this stamp set is one of those stamp sets that does the work for you because it gives you this amazing watercolor effect without actually having to watercolor. So it's a big stamp. It is a big stamp. But I will show you just how impressive this stamp is. I pushed, I pushed that ink pad so hard, I may never get it closed again. Well, that's okay. I'll quit fighting with it because I just uh, stuck my entire hand in it. Okay, so going to ink up our stamp and that's all I'm doing right this stamp is uh, Stampin' Up's got all the good technology when people come to stamp with me and they and they tell me well I'm not really good at that or you know I'm not very artistic I say it doesn't matter I have all the good toys and really I have stuff that does the work for you and it does the work for you because Stampin' Up's got the fancy tools that make all this stuff easy so the way they cut this stamp it seriously does all the work for you Bye. And it gives you that whole watercolor image. And it is amazing. And all I did was stamp. It's got different depths, different toe. Oh, it's amazing. Anyway, so my thought was I was going to put a little bit of tree on the inside. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to put like a half, half stamped tree because it was a lot of white. So that's why I had to stamp the first one first. Okay, now I'm going to try to move this stuff because seriously... I pushed the thing in, and I'm not sure why. I've never actually done that before, but... Um, oh, there we go. But I pushed it so hard, I didn't think I was ever going to get that close. And yes, all over my hand. Okay. Now let's finish our assembly that we were working on. You can decorate the inside as much as you want. On the first one, there was a little die cut stuck in there. Um, and a whole lot of DSP. You can stamp on the inside... Um, you can do, I mean, like stamp on the inside of the card. You can put die cuts on the inside of the card. You can put embossed layers on the inside of the card. I think you have to decide how much do you want to write. And I mean, this is a good card if you if you are sending it to somebody where you just want to say, you know, congrats on all your success. But you don't really have a, you know, a ton you want to write. <laughs> um, because then you don't have to because there's only so much room. Okay, so like I said, this is much easier to line up and center if you're a perfectionist. 
um, when you can, oops, I'm off the camera, when you can lay it flat. So look how cool that is. Okay, so now I've got the inside in. And remember, you're going at an angle. You're not making a square, you're making a diamond. Luckily, our square dies double as diamond dies. Okay, so this is how this is going to go in. Now, when I saw it the first time, and I'm, I'm going to purposely, again, I like to experiment live because, hey, that's how I roll. I'm not sure why I don't just open this card and show you the stuff I keep thinking of. <clears throat> it's not like it's hard to open. So when I saw the, the how-to, it showed um, securing the bottom down first. Right? So this, this is adhered behind here. But when I was testing it to see where, because they had said something about it doesn't matter where this lines up, but I found out it really does. Like, I made it, the one card I made was a huge mess, so I, I found out it did. But I did find out that it really doesn't seem to matter if this is taped down. So because I can't decide if I'm going to use that other thing or not, I'm not actually going to tape the back down. I'm just going to experiment. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to line this up. Basically what you want to do is you want to get this about halfway, right? Okay. First off, put adhesive on. Then worry about getting it lined up. So again, I love me some tear and tape. So I'm going to use tear and tape. And I'm just going to put it along the top of this corner. Now, because I have, this is an, at an angle, it's going to go off. And I could, I could cut it or tear it to, to give me the angle. But really, the most wear and tear on this seam is going to be right there at the corner. So I just stick my big old thumbs in there and fold it over. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the first one. Now, we want to line this up. At this point, we're trying to center it in the middle of the card, but that's going to take care of itself in a minute. Like, center it this way. We also want to center it this way. Like I said, I think you could go, I think you could put it high, and then you'd have more room to write down below. I just don't know if it would look the way you wanted it to. I'm, I'm inclined to think that you want it to pop open in the center. So I'm going to line that up. So now what I'm going to do is, and like I said, the video I saw, it said it didn't matter. Um, but I found that the one I tried, it did. It really did. And by the way, Tammy White. Thank you very much, Tammy White. She's a big time demo in, um, in the States. And she had, if you, if you Google her, uh, she made like 15 different explosion cards and all sorts of different patterns and stuff. So if you'd like to see samples, she's got a lot more than I do. Um, okay. So all I did was line this up on the edge. Now her, and so, okay. So her card looked like it worked when she was doing it, but she had hers down like a quarter inch. When I did mine down a quarter inch, when I went to close it, it would only close this far. It wouldn't fully close. So I do not understand. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put another strip along the top of this one. And I found you don't need to, I mean, I guess if you were using lesser adhesive, and you could use the liquid adhesive here as well. Um, if you were using one that wasn't as strong as this tear and tape, maybe you'd put the whole diamond. Um, I, I want to put as little as possible because I, I want the card to open as much as possible and I don't want to risk pulling on it and ripping it. Okay, so that one I had, a, I had a quite a bit extra, so we'll just make that I'm just folding over all the extras. Usually if you do it just a little bit past on an angle, you can fold it back on itself and it's just that perfect little bit. Okay, so I'm going to close our card again. And I'm doing this to line it up, to, to try to keep things like as square as possible. But I also want to make sure that I, I'm hitting the edge of the card. Um, and I found it was easier to do it that way, to line it up this way just to make sure so I wasn't going... Because you go just that little bit crooked and your bottom, your corners aren't going to line up. Okay, so I'm just going to let go. I'm a little bit inside and I want it to line up. But I want, like I said, I want it to be square like this way. I also want it to be square. So I'm lining it up as close as I can. And now I'm just going to let it go up so I get the end. There we go. So now it's not a completely flat card. Um, I did find though that it will it will just fit through depending how much you embellish the front it will just fit through as a like as a regular card like regular postage 
But if you're going to put any kind of embellishment or anything on the front, you're going to put it over the edge. And so you're going to have to put it in as, as the parcel rate or the oversized rate, I mean. So it is a little thick, but but uh, look at that bad boy. And the thing that I found and the reason and I found it when I was doing the trial and error on the other one. So if you look at this card, when I open it up at a certain point, I, I'm now I'm pulling on the edges, right? Because this is taped down. But with this one, when I open it, I can I can just about open the card flat because I didn't tape the bottom down. And the thing is, it doesn't really, like, it doesn't pop up or anything. It's just not taped down. So there's a bit of space behind it. So, and the reason I did that is because I'm undecided of whether or not I wanted to put this here. And I wanted to see first. Oops. Yeah, see, because even if I put it here, I'm still covering most of it. So I've only got like a little bit, but I could, I mean, I could stamp the trees on there and I could do some writing on there. Um, I could stamp directly on the green card stock. I could put die cuts. Quite honestly, I'm not 100% sure how I was going to finish that. I, I, I had planned out the outside more than the inside. Yep, full disclosure. Um, the other thing you could do, I think, is you could have this piece of paper and you could, or this piece of card stock, and you could put like a little stamp on it. Actually, I wonder if we still have any ink left on Let's see here. You can't see me doing it, but I'm breathing on my stamp because I haven't actually cleaned it off yet. And it sort of, there you go, it sort of freshens up the ink again, gets it a little bit wet again. So <laughs> because I hadn't actually cleaned it off, there was enough ink left on it. So now I've got like a little bit of a tree. So I have a little bit of a decoration. I could write on here and I could just slide it in behind here. And because we don't want it to fall out when they open it up, if I put some kind of embellishment or some kind of little layer or something that held it on here or even just one tiny little glue dot where you could pull uh, glue dot you might end up ripping that might not be the best idea but something that will just like almost like a little pocket to put it into I could put like a little banner or something then you then you could pull the whole thing out and read it and still tuck it behind I think there's options I haven't fully decided how that one's gonna go but I am gonna try something different on the outside so go back to our little pieces of paper and like this is one piece I cut in half and I don't really think it matters but I am just for just because I'm gonna line it up so I got it the way I, it originally was so what I want to do with this one is instead of putting a belly band on I just want to put a bow so I can tie it and then when you untie it and open it up and I actually saw a picture of a card that looks nothing like this this morning that just the way the layout was pretty cool though so that's what made me decide how i was going to decorate the front of this so i think i can make this all work because this linen thread which i adore is very thin i'm going to double it over though so i now have two of them and i'm going to do it off to the side like i said because i have a plan in my mind okay that should be enough so we'll just cut that <laughs> now because I want to make this plan work. Oh, I just realized that's not going to work. What I was thinking is not going to work because it's going to be underneath. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Actually, it might just work. Just going to revise as I go. So here's what we're going to do. I want this to be on the side. And it is. I'm going to leave that... Uh, I'll leave that loop and forget about it, aren't I? I'll just split those. I'll trim the ends and everything later. Right now, I just wanted something to give me an idea where this was going to go. So what I'm going to do, because I want to be able to tie the bow here, because I want to put this, which I will glue down. I want to put this over top, off to the side. So the bow is going to have to go way, way farther off. So this is what I want to do. I want to put this on the front, like this. So when you look at the card, because you don't really notice, you kind of notice the seam as much as I lined it up. You notice the seam a little bit because there's a bunch of stuff in it. But So I want the bow to be off to the side like this with these things underneath. So I can't, I can't put this over on both sides, obviously. I can only put it on one. But I want to be able to anchor this thread down so when you untie the bow, it doesn't fall off. So by doing this, I now know, seems like a lot of work, but I now know where this string goes which is basically what I was trying to find out. So I'm going to put my little pretty paper on the outside. 
That's what I'm going to put down. But the other thing I'm going to do to make sure that this does not come out and that we don't, um, it's not like super easy to fall out, is I'm going to tape it down with this piece of tear and tape right there. So now not only is it going to stay there, but it's also going to give the paper that I put over top of it will also kind of stick down to hold it. Now I'm going to untie this a little bit because that thing's in my way. <laughs> Okay, so again, if your paper is directional, make sure you have the right direction going up. And I am just going to, the bow was in my way. The card's not in the way, but the bow definitely was. So untie the bow. Um, I like to have a skinny little border. So I only have a 1 16th border. And the only trick with that is Makes it a little, you have to be a little more precise to put the things down. But that's okay. So, oh, God, I just love this paper. So now our string is not lost. And I think, so when we untie it, I think it would be better to have something across the back, which I might put a, a sorry, I'm totally off camera there. I might put another strip of this paper just across the back to hold it. That's the other thing with this card. You make it all big and fancy on the front. Oh, there we go. I just solved my own problem. We just made it all big and fancy on the front, right? We could always write on the back. So guess what? Even though I didn't totally plan it because I'm winging it as I go, this is what's going to hold the string on the back. We'll just put this piece here. And other than the fact that there's going to be a little bump in the middle, when you go to write, you can write all over here and all over here. Problemo solved. See, that's why I didn't glue it down. Because eventually my brain was going to catch up to my thoughts. <laughs> and I was gonna I was gonna have a breakthrough. Okay, so I'm gonna just do that right now because we thought of it. So there we go. Because this last piece of string is gonna have to be loose to go over the paper because if not, um, we won't be able to get anything on. And then we are going to good thing I already stamped this because now I can just go in. So this is how people craft. When you see those nice polished videos online and everybody's doing every it's it's because they've already gone through this process <laughs> um sometimes things come to you the first try and just as you go it's just automatic sometimes you spend four hours and you don't even end up with a card and sometimes it's somewhere in the middle where you start with one thing and then it, you just sort of adapt as you go <laughs> and in the end it all comes together so there we go now we can just write on the back and it holds our string so <clears throat> back to the front of our card we are, oh my goodness, when I look up, I just, it's amazing to see how much that blends into my desk. I have the most lovely desk, thanks to Corey, um, co-worker, well, former co-worker, I'm the one retired now, he's still there, much younger, um, who made me this awesome crafting desk, because he is a very good woodworker, very talented. So... I'm going to put this piece of paper on. So now when I tie my card shut, I'm tying it over top on the one side, but that's okay. And the trick, if you're, if you're ever putting your, um, making a bow and it's like on a card where it, it doesn't have to be able to move, I tell you the trick to tying a bow is stick a little glue dot underneath where you want the bow to be so much easier. Or a second finger. Get, get somebody else in the house to put their finger down while you're tying. Okay, so I have my bow, which I like. And I have my, take out my good scissors this time. I have my very long strands here, which need some trimming. I don't want to cut them too short because the person who opens and closes this card, depending how many times they do it, um, each time they open and close, see it's loose, a little bit loose now, but um, I don't want them to have like super short tough to try to deal with. Okay, so I'm going to pop this dude together. And this is my front. I might go and make a card that looks more like the one I saw. Um, I wanted to make this one with the tree. So here, we might as well finish the whole thing. As soon as I figure out, oh, there we go, what I did with the stamp set. Um, the other one had flowers on it, and I do like flowers. I have nothing against flowers. Um, I just like trees better. 
but I wanted this to be a tree. Um, in my opinion, even even with the big bow on it, which is because it's made out of linen thread, it's not. I don't think it's a this this is an overly feminine card. I think this is a give it to a guy card. Or I always say that, and then I always get like really self conscious because we shouldn't pigeonhole people. Um, give it to someone not super who who wants something that's not super frilly. Just this is a very natural card. Um, in the card world, people are always talking about masculine and feminine cards, which is what makes me kind of revert to that terminology. But yes, this is more just not frilly. It's nice and natural. Okay, I'm putting three pieces on here because if not, this is never going to sit to my liking. Because <laughs> part of it is hanging off the edge of the card. And I'm just hanging it off the edge of the card because I want to. Uh, so now, I want this piece, see I've got my bow underneath my, I should have looked at where I was putting that, or should have looked at where the bow was, there we go. I, I do kind of want it, I did kind of want it like sort of piled in the corner a little bit, but kind of got over top of each other. So in this case, I'm putting about two thirds of this down. So <laughs> when you do this, when you flip it over. Make sure you get the right two thirds. So in this case, I, and luckily for me, I have this sticking over the edge. So I do not want this part. I want the other two thirds. And again, <laughs> I have said it before, I love tear and tape. So I'm going to, uh, put, and tear and tape is a good strong adhesive. So for something like this, um, you definitely want to, these are not even at all even, but that's okay. Um, you definitely want a good adhesive that will hold this on. Okay, so the one that didn't go to the bottom, I made for up for it by making this one go past the bottom. So just waste not want. Now I'll just stick that little piece over there. Okay, so I am going to. There we go. I'm gonna put. Oh, forgot my little waste not want not piece. Okay, so because I stuck my finger in the old olive ink pad, um, I keep freaking myself out because it looks like my thumb is starting to mold. I'm not that old. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, and I'm just going to offset it a bit. And I'm just going to make sure <laughs> that I am not gluing my card shed. I just want it off a little bit off the corner, and then I want it to go straight down. Oh, I don't know. There was something about this. So this was the layout. It, it was just plain paper underneath. And it had just a, it had a big rectangle, but it was flowers. I don't even know if there's a sentiment. I don't even remember now. Um, but I just, I love the way it looked like this big chunk off in the corner. <laughs> and I, so I thought that's how I'm making this card. So I am quite happy with how this worked out. And if I was tying it a little bit tighter instead of the poor job I did of the other one, it would hold better. So there we go. Actually, I could put, do the bow this way because then it'll, it'll go where I want. So now we have number two on our explosion cards. So instead of having the belly band, which slides, uh, and here's the thing, I will tell you right off the bat, I didn't even have to try it to know the answer to this. Um, and the, I mean, the belly band, you, you see, it went on easy, right? So there's the one with the belly band. If I was to use a ribbon such as this soon to retire. Believe me, people stock up on this ribbon. This is um, this like quarter inch cotton ribbon. Oh, it ties the best bows. But if you were to use a ribbon like this or a thicker ribbon instead of the this um, linen thread, it would it would go a lot like it would be a lot easier to put on. The linen thread's a little tougher, but I, I love the linen thread. And I feel like I need I feel like I need some embellishments. Um, so I'm a little bit obsessed right now. You may have noticed on a lot of the cards lately. Um, <laughs> it's rare that I actually so quickly will finish a pack of embellishments. Um, but these these bad boys are just awesome. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a butterfly right there. And I like things in threes. You'll notice I even put three strips of, uh, of tear and tape. <laughs> I do tend to go in threes. I'm just going to, uh, uh, 
Uh, and honestly, still would give it to a guy. Because, hey, who doesn't like butterflies? So there we go. We have a nice... So now you get this card and you're like, ooh, pretty. And then you, you realize, well, I have to untie it to open it. Ta-da! <laughs> I love cards with effect. Um, and I did find out afterwards, because you like to, you know, your cards to stand up. These cards will stand up. They stand up a little bit funny. <laughs> like, you don't see all of, like, you want, like, a, you would have with a normal tent card. But they do stand up. And so, now you can see the inside. You can see that I could have stamped along here, right? I could have stamped some stuff. But this one with the trees and this, uh, I don't know. I kind of like it just the way it is. So, there we go. There's two cards. Um, so now, well, here, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just tying the bow back up. So, last thing I'm going to show you, because I'm already late for posting, is we have so many nice DSPs. And this, this piece of DSP that we started with, as I said, was 8x4, which means you can't use the 6x6, because it's not 8x4. <laughs> I know, that's some, there's some very advanced math for you there. The 8-inch paper, or the 6-inch paper is not 8 inches. Um, so... It got me thinking, can I make a card <laughs> with the six inch paper? Like what happens if I do? So based on the fact that on the, on the main card, it's eight by four. I figured, okay, so the four is half of eight. I'll make this one six by three. So, and this is not a finished card and you'll see why in a minute because it doesn't really work. But So this, and I, actually it's not that it doesn't work. It just may not be exactly what you're looking for. So I scored same card base, same scoring, but I used the smaller piece of DSP. Now the problem is <laughs> that you'll see I can't even fully open this card. Now if I had if I had fa fastened the bottom down like I was supposed to, I would barely open this card. <laughs> but because I didn't secure the, the this piece here, it does open a little bit. It just does not open very much. So maybe that's okay. Maybe I mean you still get a little bit of an effect, but it's not it's not what you're going for my thought was if you wanted to use a full-size card <clears throat> with six by six paper perhaps you just make one half and the other half and then just kind of overlap them so instead of making eight by four make two five by four pieces and have an inch of overlap in the middle and then and you I would I would suggest you take your two pieces and secure them together and then when you put this little whatever you put in the middle to decorate it and I mean you could go edge to edge if you wanted to cover the seam I like to have a little border that would cover up your marks right so you could probably make two of them just take the piece of paper but I thought well I'm determined to make this work with a just a six by six piece so enter note cards these things are genius. So they come in a pack like this <laughs> and you get 20, I want to say 20, am I right? 20 note cards and 20 um, envelopes and they come scored. So this, this piece of cardstock is already scored and I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing to, you can almost see it there. Um, to sh oh yeah, there you go. You can kind of see the score line. So there's a score line here already. Now, if you don't bend the card, the score line's not super obvious. The score line is more obvious by feel than it is by sight. So I took one of these, which honestly, I don't even know what the dimensions of these things are. I probably should. Five and one eighth by three and five eighths. So because this is three and five eighths, oops, just a minute, get my ruler going the right way. Um, so this is three and five eighths is what it says. See, and for me, when I read this, Maybe the envelope, maybe that's the envelope that's that. Uh, this was three and a half when I did it. So three and a half, one and three quarters. So all I did was score at one and three quarters on either corner. <clears throat> and I did the same thing I did with the big one. I folded one over first. Uh, this card stock's a little thicker, so but I did. <clears throat> and I find that the smaller area you're that you're trying to bend over, the, the more resistance you get. Like on the bigger piece of card stock, it's easy to bend over. So this being a little bit thicker and smaller, it took a little bit more to kind of get that bend, but so I did the same thing to line up in the middle. So here's what I ended up with. <clears throat> Still fits in the envelope. This is the envelope that comes with it. And this is not decorated because I spent too much time fighting with the computer and not enough time finishing this card. But I wanted to show you that here is that lovely ribbon I was talking about. 
And in this case, I didn't even decorate the front, which, which did make, I mean, I would never just leave it just like this, but it did make me think we don't have to get super fancy with DSP. You could like stamp on the front. This almost looks like a present. If I had put a piece like this, right? Just even just to put one piece of ribbon along the edge. Does that not just look like a present? <laughs> so the, the note cards are white and very vanilla. Um, so it's basically a white present, but yeah, I could have stamped some stuff on here and made it look, but my point was just to show you what works. So this is the note card. Um, and if you didn't want it white, you could use cardstock, just cut it to smaller dimensions. So, and then when we open this, but, uh, it works like it's supposed to. So this is basically, and I did it just because I thought, Hey, this is easy. Note cards are easy. <laughs> um, but look how much this card opens. Again, I didn't fasten down the bottom, although if I had fastened down the bottom, it would be here and I'd still be able to mostly open this card. Like I, I would open this card to at least 90 degree angle. Um, I just didn't. So that gives me just a little bit more play. But this is just six by three. And instead of scoring at two, four and six, I scored at one and a quarter, four and a quarter. Nope, it's been one and a quarter, three, four and a quarter. That's not right. One and a half, three four and a half sorry so I just basically I did the same thing like eight I was I was dividing by into four so I took six and I divided it into four and then I made the same little x's so it works perfect so I would think if you decided you wanted to go what did I say eight by four you want to make it 12 make it 12 by six and instead of scoring every two inches you score every three inches I am impressed with myself that I did the math that quick so yeah this makes and these note cards this note card size is mailable. Put a stamp on it, pop it in the envelope um, or in the regular mail and it goes. So that's why I picked this, right? I always want to pick something that's easy to do. So a six by six piece makes a lovely note card. Um, same thing, you're just gonna pop a little square in the middle there, decorate it your sides. Uh, this one, you could make a belly band. If you're gonna make a belly band, um, it's not gonna fit in this envelope very well. I can tell you that because this envelope is a little bit snugger fit than the medium ones. And when I had just the ribbon on it, I, I had to like kind of hold the ribbon and push and get a little maneuvering. So if you do put a belly band on it, you're probably not gonna get it back in this envelope. But I would suggest if you wanted to, if, if you were using the six by six paper, cause it was your absolute favorite and you wanted to make this card and make a nice fancy be belly band for it, just put it in one of the bigger envelopes. Because um, I gotta quit using white on white. It's kind of hard to see, but but you see how much if you use the bigger envelope, you have lots of play to put this card in there. And we do have like the New Horizons DSP, which is so beautiful. It's six by six. This very fun uh, now retired celebration. Beautiful the marble. I mean, there's some of the stuff that the six by six DSPs that come out are just so nice. So there we go, peep. Explosion cards. Lots of fun. Woo. Um, thanks for hanging in there. I went a little bit over what I planned to, but uh, these are a fun card to make. Um, and they're not they're not that hard. They're really quick to do. Um, I just tend to ramble. <laughs> so um, I would love to see what you make. Post some pictures. I'm going to post a link to this video on Facebook, or if you're not a Facebooker, um, Facebooky, whatever the right word is there, then uh, you can always email me or message me your pictures and I will post them for you. And yeah, these are fun cards. Um, I'd love to see what you tried with them. Thanks everyone. Have a great day and we will uh, try again on Thursday. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks everyone. Bye.